In this video, I'll look at how you can retrieve a course learning outcome from the Institutional Bank of Outcomes and use that in an assignment which is submitted in class, in a residential class, not online, and get that marked by a rubric and report back the assessment to the institutional level. I'm here in my sandbox course, then I've got nothing set up in it, so I'm going to be starting from a clean slate. The very first thing I'm going to need to do is to get a hold of my course learning outcomes from the Institutional Bank of Student Learning Outcomes. I'll click on Find, the fourth button there, Account Standards, College of Micronesia, dash FSM, and then the Division, Math Science Division. Let's pick up a science course. There's an SC-130 outcome. I'll pick that one up, tell it OK, and that will import that outcome. If I wish to get a, another outcome, I go to Find, click on the outcome I want, go down to Import, and import that. And so I can bring my course learning outcomes in uh, to my bank. If for some reason you don't see your course learning outcomes, uh, do contact, uh, uh, contact me and let me know. But those are my course learning outcomes already set up. I'll now need a rubric to mark the assignment that I'll be collecting in class. So I'll click on the rubrics here and open them up. I'll add a rubric. Uh, you can give it a name that makes sense to you. Uh, I'll call this an assessment rubric just for now. You can have any criterion you want. You, you can add those in. I'm going to take that out though. I'm going to keep this simple. And I'm just going to add in the course learning outcomes. I'm importing that to the rubric. And let me go ahead and add the other one just to show you what that looks like. Import. And I've imported both of my course learning outcomes to my assessment rubric. And I say create rubric. I now have a rubric that uses the two course learning outcomes that I pulled down, imported from the institutional level. Then I set up the assignment that I'll be collecting in class. To do that, I'll go to uh, Add Assignment here on the Assignment screen. And this will be uh, some sort of in-class assignment. It might be some uh, 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 self-reflection paper or something else I'm collecting in class, some in-class some in class artifact gets collected. Um, and this would be the directions to the students here. It would be the instructions to the students would go here. The key is down here, uh, after I give it the points and tell it what category it's in, uh, the key is right here submission type, no submission. No submission means there's no submission. Because there's no submission, I don't have to set a due date. I can, but that's going to be optional because the students aren't submitting to this. Uh, just for uh, the sake of having one, I'll go ahead and have a due date. And then I'll simply say save and publish. I have to publish it or the students can't see it. But the due date is to some extent optional. The due date, though, does allow it to... A to appear in calendars and other places where dates show. It won't have a date otherwise and, and sorts it into uh, when you do a gradebook sort by date for example that may be important to have. So it's now published and students can do it. So the student will do their work but when if they go to this there is nothing to submit. There is no submit button. So that's what the students at this point we'll see it's published so they will see that but they will not have anything that they can do to mark it once I've collected that artifact in class I'll go to grades and I can go to the self-reflection paper I'll go to speed grader I have no submission because this is something I collected in in the class oh sorry one more step before I try to mark this. I don't often do them this way. I usually have stuff collected in class. Let me go back to my self-reflection paper. I always forget to attach the rubric right here at the bottom. 
Notice that when I'm at the edit screen where I just was and where I set, this is edit, where I set the no submission, that's right here, no submission, that's not where the rubric goes. The rubric belongs back here. And so when I click on rubric, I get some rubric, which is not the one I want. So I click on find a rubric, tell it it's in my sandbox, it's my assessment rubric, and all I have to do is click on this little blue one here above the rubric. That'll attach the rubric. I do one more thing. I click on the pencil now and go down, and I'll tell it that I do uh, want the uh, rubric to be used for assignment grading, and that will assign the points. Uh, and I click update rubric, a little bit counterintuitive, but I'll click update rubric, and now the rubric will grade this assignment. You don't have to have the rubric grade the assignment. You can grade the assignment separate. So you can actually have an assignment that you're grading on a points basis and a rubric that's operating on a, off of these outcomes that are generating a different number of points. So if you change this setting under the pencil right here, you can have a different... Uh, a different score for the assignment while still using the rubric. Now that that's done, I can go ahead and mark it. I uh, suppose I've collected the paper. Uh, and now, again, I'll go back to speed grader for that student. And now I have the view rubric button that was missing before. And again, I don't have a submission. But I'll go to view rubric. And now, since I have the artifact in hand, I can simply click on these to mark whatever the mark is for this particular assignment. I say save, and because I set it to generate the grade, it does automatically make the grade appear here. If you don't see the grade appear here, then you didn't make that setting, and that's the situation in which you can have the two different marks. Well, that's that now not only marks it, but these two point scales, 3 and 5, flow back into the institutional assessment system uh, because these were pulled from the institutional outcomes bank. These will flow back into that system. So you can have an assignment that you collected uh, in class. And this is also how you use Canvas as simply a grade book in support of a residential class with in-class submissions. Uh, I have here a column that I can do rubrics in. If I don't attach rubric, then I just have a blank into which I can assign points. And so it is possible to use Canvas simply as a gradebook supporting completely offline assignments that you're entering into the gradebook itself. I hope that's been helpful and I do thank you for watching.